Hello and welcome to this first video where we're actually talking about the history stuff. Isn't that exciting? Ha <laughs> ha, tricked you. <laughs> actually, we're talking about prehistory stuff. Because history is the study of what we have written records of. Prehistory is really more the realm of archaeologists and anthropologists who study this by looking at human remains, settlements, fossils, and artifacts. And they use some scientific tests to take a look at those things. So, uh, yeah, we're still in the prehistory bit. But it's going to be really cool. Now, human beings began here in the Great Rift Valley area of Africa about 3.6 million years ago. It's the early, early, early hominids. And the tree of life like branched out into a whole bunch of different hominid species, but we ended up the dominant one, and we spread out around the Earth. And here, these dates are where we have the earliest evidence of human habitation. So we spread around the Earth, but... We started in one place, which means we knew how to get food in that place. We knew how to survive in that place. So when they moved around, they encountered all of these things, and really where they were living too. Extreme heat, extreme cold, flooding, lack of water, large predator, seasonality of food, and little to no medicine compared to what we have now. Yikes. And so they adapted. The biggest way that they were able to do this is oral language. Because imagine what life would be like if you did not have this oral language. It's possible that other hominid species use like gestures, like uh, a sign language essentially, but human beings developed an oral language, which allowed for the transfer of knowledge, complex social coordination, abstract ideas, like talking about a thing that isn't even present in front of you right now, which basically allows you to develop culture and tell people like, hey, that plant is terrible. That's going to make you barf. Don't eat that. But also for us to come up with big notions about why we're here and that kind of thing. So it's pretty useful. So as they traveled around, these hunter-gatherers were nomadic, who lived mostly by fishing, uh, hunting, harvesting wild foods. And they used that oral language to know how, like to share the know-how of living in these new places. Here's some key time periods. So let's talk about when all of this was happening. Uh, the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age, and all these, you know, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic. Paleo means old, meso means middle, neo means new. Lithic means stone stuff. So, like, the Old Stone Age was about 300,000 to 10,000. Now, we base all of these, and in fact also Bronze Age and Iron Age, these, like, timeline pieces, on what tools we find in the ground. That's basically it. It's like, what technology do they have available? Cool. That's the age. And here's an example. So when we say Stone Age tools, we mean you take a big rock, you use a different rock to hit that rock in a very special way, and it flakes off a sharp bit that you can use to cut stuff. <laughs> Ta-da, stone tool. Um, but you notice like 2.5 million years ago, already tools being used. But they get more complex over time, and it requires more complex use of your brains which is really cool. So it's probable that human brains had to evolve a bunch to get to the point where we were doing this, which is very cool. But we weren't just using tools. And honestly, the stone tools are probably just the ones that survived. We probably were using like bone tools and wooden tools, but those just degrade over time. So it's just what we have evidence of. Now we do have evidence of the use of fire. And it seems like humans started out using naturally occurring fire that you find in the environment after like a lightning strike or something like that. Uh, then they started gathering that fire and keeping it alive over time by just feeding wood into it, maybe like down here. And then starting fires for cooking. But the cooking part comes much, much later. We have much later evidence of it. So it seems like humans may have been using fire even before that um, for a variety of different purposes. But here's some advantages. Imagine that you are moving to a new place as a group of humans. Uh, you'll get warmth from this fire, especially if you're moving north. You see, like, in this picture here. But also, there might be food resources that you haven't been able to use before. Like, say, have you ever tried to eat a raw potato? It's terrible. It's actually bad for you. So do not do that. But if you cook a potato, it's, it's not just great. It's like one of the most calorie-dense foods. So cooking allows humans ease of digestion, which is good. And then also extra nutrition and access to other food resources you didn't have before. So fire was a big deal. If you were living back then, you were living likely in a clan of about 10 to 30 members, likely a max of 15. We'll talk about why that is in a second. There is some evidence of a gendered division of labor. Uh, we know that from cave paintings and also from studying modern day hunter-gatherer societies where uh, men primarily doing the hunting, women uh, 
performing childcare duties and also doing all the gathering and all, doing a lot of things, honestly. Um, they had a surprising amount of free time in their lives uh, because they were not performing the sorts of farm labor that take an enormous amount of time to produce a surplus for other people. Uh, they had pretty good nutrition. They had a, a varied diet, especially compared to folks who would later be uh, farming and surviving off of maybe just one uh, primary calorie source. They had clothing made of skins or other natural materials readily available in their environment. We don't have a lot of evidence of this because not a lot survives over time. Uh, and they, based on studies of modern-day hunter-gatherer societies, they probably lived in relatively equal societies, with few people doing specialized jobs. We don't have a great... So they didn't leave any writing behind but they did leave cave paintings like this one. And honestly, that's better than I could do if I'm looking at that right now. A little derpy in the middle, but it seems fine. So we have a sense from these paintings both what their lives were like, and we have a sense that they were thinking uh, maybe a little bit supernaturally, but at least big picture about their lives and their place in the world and things like that. It gives us a window into what their lives were like. And here's the last thing we're going to talk about for hunter-gatherers is this idea of carrying capacity. So... Carrying capacity is the most people, in this case, that can live in an area given food, water, habitat, and other resources, which changes over time and maybe even with the seasons. Um, but humans aren't just limited to this. We don't just eat one thing because it's instinctual. We can figure out new food sources, new ways to process food like cooking. Um, and we can also just move to a new place to obtain safety or resources pretty easily because of our ability to create culture and pass ideas down in a cultural way and not just through evolution. So essentially, if you're looking over here at this metaphor, we're building up the sides of the bucket. That's why humans were able to spread so far, so fast, and essentially dominate the landscape. So that's hunter-gatherers. Next time, we'll talk about the development of farming.